horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, I will exalt you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, it's in Jesus' name that we come before you, Father. Lord, we bless you. We praise you. We magnify you, Father. Lord, we're so thankful for this day. We're thankful for life. We're thankful for full strength and health, Lord God. We're thankful for this bread, this house of bread that, Lord, we can come to and get fed your word. Father God, we thank you right now that the atmosphere is set that your word is going to come forth unhindered in this place this day, Father God. We know that you have already prepared those that's going to speak forth your word, so give us in a heart and open our eyes up the eyes of our understanding that we can receive what you have to say to us this day, Lord God. Father God, we thank you that all needs in this place are met. Father God, whatever the need is, you're going to meet it this day in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for our pastor and his household, Lord God. Continue to bless him and his, his family also, Lord God. Father God, bless this ministry, Father God, in every aspect, Lord God. We praise you, we bless you, we magnify you, Lord. We give you all praise, all honor, and all glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. setting uh, for tonight. Uh, 
Turn with me into your Bibles to uh, Genesis chapter number 22. Genesis chapter number 22. And I want to read into your hearing verse number 8. These words are recorded. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb. And as far as I want to go. Subject for tonight. I know you probably said, uh, thought in your mind the Lord will provide. And, I mean, and, 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 and he does. But the subject for tonight is the great provider. The great provider. You know, when we look back in uh, Genesis, when God created the heavens and earth, and he created this world and everything that's in it, and he made provisions for man to live here in this world forever, and everything that he would ever need, he had already provided him to sustain him throughout his life here in this world before man ever got here Mm -hmm. God had already provided everything that he would need and you know I was uh, looking at something here and I want to share this with you too in Exodus uh, chapter number 15 I just want to share this with you in Exodus chapter number 15 the great provider the great provider. Yeah. Not just the provider, but the great uh, provider. Now, look at what's going on here in verse number 22. The words say, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And they, when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Yeah. Therefore, the name of the place was called Mara. Mm-hmm. Now, you got to understand something here. After God had delivered Israel from Egyptian bondage yeah. Yeah. with a mighty hand Amen. and provided them safe passage across or through the Red Sea, they came into the wilderness of Shur, a barren place. Wasn't nothing there. Three days they found no water. You know, God was trying to teach them a lesson that they are out there on his word being led by his prophet Moses and that they were going to have to learn to depend on him for all of their needs. So they kept marching and they came to Mara where they found some water. Now, this water was bitter. No water in sure. But now they find some bitter water. Uh, And you know uh, when people find something uh, unsatisfactory to them, they always want to point the finger, point the blame yeah. on somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. So what they did, they took out their frustrations on Moses, the man in charge. Yeah. They began to complain against Moses. Moses, we thirst out here. Been out here walking. And we don't have no water. This water, it ain't fit for nobody to drink. Even if we try to drink it, it'll make us sick. Moses, we want some water, and we want it right now. So Moses did the next best thing. He was under God's uh, order, so he cried out unto the Lord. So he says, uh, 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 Lord, what am I going to do? I'm out here with all these poor people out here, and they ready to... Uh, 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 do me in. Yeah. So God showed him 
a stick, a limb, a tree limb. And what he did was he cast the stick into the water, and the water that was bitter was made sweet. Now, y'all probably don't know nothing about this, some of y'all, but uh, when we came up, we had what was called Sweet Lucy. Okay. Yeah. So God made the bitter water, turn it into some Sweet Lucy. Amen. But they kept on marching, and they got to a place called Elam. God provided 12 wells of water and 70 uh, palm tree. Yeah. Now, they didn't have no water in Shur, built a water in Mara, and now God leads them to 12 wells of water. Yeah. 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 Uh, the reason for the 12 wells of water is that God did not want them fussing and fighting and arguing over no water. So that was one for every tribe. And every tribe had a well where they could go to and get their own water, refreshing water. So they keep on, and, and, and they had, a, I think they had 70 palm trees. A palm tree is an upright tree. It's a stately tree. It's an a, a, a evergreen tree. And God provided them in a desert place, in, in, in the wilderness where everything was barren, yeah. a lodging yeah. place Glory. where they could refresh themselves yeah. and rest mm -hmm. for the upcoming journey Amen. that they were about to take on. Yeah. Don't tell me that God is not a good provider. Yeah. The Lord God will provide. Yeah. He's able yeah. to provide. Yeah. He's able to do and give you whatever it is that you need from him. Moving on now, I want to go to Numbers. And, and, and I'm almost through. Who that said amen? <laughs> Somebody, okay. I want to go to uh, Numbers chapter 11. Numbers chapter 11. Numbers chapter 11. Y'all ain't uh, far from Numbers, so uh, you'll be able to find it right quick. Okay. Now I want you to see something here. Look at verse uh, number six. There's a lot coming up to these verses, but I can't get into all of these because I need to get through in my allotted time. The words say, but now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. And the manna was as coriander seed, and the color thereof as the color of bedellium. Now, this is something interesting here. God had provided them food to eat, manna uh, from heaven. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, they ain't just tired of it, but they despising it. Wow. They don't want no more manna. We tired of eating this manna. But the thing about it, uh, they didn't have to buy it, didn't have to pay for it, didn't have to work for it. And there were so many ways that they could prepare. Mm -hmm. They could eat it for cereal. Mm -hmm. They could make muffins, pancakes. <laughs> they could fry it. No matter how you fix it, yeah. Yeah. it remained the same, and it was good tasting, yeah. just like honey wafers. But they tired of it. And God rained it down in the night on the dew drops. So it uh, stayed fresh yes. all the time, but they tired of it. Now, 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 God did something in here for us to see. He said this matter was uh, as a coriander seed, and the color of it was as bedellium. Uh -huh. Now, uh, you know, I find it fascinating that God would describe uh, this food that he sent yeah. to his children in the wilderness. Yeah. He wanted us to know that he didn't just give them any old thing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the Korean, Koreana seed uh, 
it's, uh, it's in the parsley family. And it's seed are used for seasoning food. Some of y'all probably got some in your cabinet. It's also used in medicine. And it also has all the vitamins and nutrition and nutritious uh, and the nourishment that the body needs. That's why. Because of all that walking in the wilderness, their feet didn't swell. And their legs didn't cramp. And it also, this is a good one here, relieves gas. <laughs> all them animals out there, all them folks out there, they had to have some peace in the camp. So, so God described uh, 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 this uh, uh, food that he had provided for them. Now, uh, the bellerium, but bellerium is that right? Uh, yeah. uh, that, that, that right? Okay. Yeah. Now, okay. Now, some Bible scholars ident identify it as being a precious stone, a precious, rare, and valuable stone, uh, like a pearl. Uh, now, I don't know. Uh, uh, I, I tried to find out what it was, but I really could because uh, in another place it talks about it, and uh, they said it's come from a a resin tree in the pine family, and uh, what it does, it pr pr produces a, a resin uh, that comes from the tree, and it smells real good. It was very aromatic. Well, uh, it could have been because uh, in uh, Genesis, I think the second chapter, uh, it talks about the river that flowed out of uh, the Garden of Eden, yeah. and uh, when it came out of the Garden of Eden, uh, it broke off into four different branches, and one of the rivers, the first river, was uh, uh, Pishon, and then it uh, flowed around uh, the valley of Havala, and then it talks about the gold, yeah. how rare and precious that it was. Yeah. It talks about the onyx stone, but it put in the middle, Belladium. So now, gold didn't need uh, no water, so the tree uh, when I could have, now I'm not saying that that's what it was, but uh, some scholars agree that it was uh, a resin that uh, was produced by a tree and it always smelled good. But what I want to tell us there is that uh, it was white according to Exodus 16 and 31. God provided them what was good looking, good smelling, good tasting, and it was good for them. Now, if God can do all of that in a wilderness, that ought to let you know that he is a great provider, a great provider. Now, where I started from in Genesis chapter 22, verse number 8, I'm just going to be there just for a minute. Genesis 22. And look at verse number 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb. He was talking to his son Isaac. He had went up to offer him the sacrifice that was required of him by God, he told him where to go and what to do. Takes his son Isaac with him. Now Isaac uh, had accompanied his father several times when he made the sacrifice. So he was familiar with what was going on. He was familiar with the sacrifice. So he said, now my father I see the wood. Uh, I see the fire. I see everything that's in order. But what's missing is the lamb. So I don't see a lamb. But now Abraham said, son, my son, God will provide 
himself. God will provide himself. Himself a lamb. God will provide himself a lamb. Couldn't depend on nobody else. The lamb had to come from God. They had had plenty of animal sacrifices. But none of them could not do what God had for them through the sacrifice of the Lamb of God. He looked all around and he did not see a, a Lamb. Now, I need to show you the Lamb. And I'll be through. Now, centuries later, in the book of John, chapter number one, and I'm going there in just one minute. He was identified. No doubt about it. Positively. Exquisitively. Definitely. He was identified years later by John the Baptist. Now let's see what John saw. Chapter 1. Verse number 2. 29. Yeah. John chapter 1. Yeah. This ought to bless you. Glory. It blessed me. Glory. John chapter 1 verse number 29. Mm -hmm. Isaac asked the question. Mm. Centuries before he says, my father, where is the lamb? Look at verse number 29. He looked all around, didn't see a lamb in sight. Of course, we do know that uh, eventually there was a, a ram in the bush caught in the thicket by his horn so he couldn't get away. But uh, here we see the identification. Look at what he said now. The next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God. Now, uh, before we get into this here, you know, uh, uh, they was, the committee was sent to uh, John the baptizer. Wanted to know who he was and who gave him authority to baptize and and uh, they wanted to make a report back to the superiors about who he was. And, uh, and he told them, say, uh, I'm just uh, uh, the voice that's just, 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 just crying uh, in the wilderness. That's, that, that, that's, that's who I am. Yeah. But now John had never seen Jesus before. He had never talked to him. Did not live in the same neighborhood. Didn't call him on the telephone. Never sent a text message. Never went on Instagram. Uh, but John points him out. Had never seen Jesus before. But he sees him and he said, Behold, look, here he is, the Lamb of God. The one that I've been talking about. The one that y'all been waiting on. Here he is. This is him. John had never seen him. But I need to let you know something right here now. Uh, he had not ever seen Jesus. But he had met him. I said he had met him. One day on the hillside of Judea. Yeah. He was pregnant. He, he was uh, inside his pregnant mother's womb. Wow. Six months old. Wow. <laughs> when Mary came to see her cousin Elizabeth, yeah. <laughs> she uh, 
gave her a, a, a greetings of salutation. John the baptizer was inside his mother's womb. And when he heard the voice of his mother talking to Mary, he couldn't control himself. What even born? Six months before he was born, he began to leap for joy in his mother's womb. The Lamb of God, the one without spot or blemish, the one which take away the sin of the world. Well now, when did he do it? On a hill called Calvary. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ was crucified. Amen. Put to death. Nailed to the cross. Yeah. The third hour. Nine o'clock. In the morning. Jesus prayed for our forgiveness. But at 12 o'clock, yeah. high noon, mm -hmm. he didn't pray for our forgiveness. He paid for our forgiveness. Yeah. Wish I had somebody. Yeah. Jesus Christ, yeah. the Lamb of God, that taken away the sin of the world. At the third hour, he prayed for our sin. Mm -hmm. Then he paid for our sin. Yeah. When Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, and he rose again the third day. Yeah. He made all the provision for us for what we would ever need. Mm -hmm. He provided for us yeah. the way out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yeah. He provided salvation, yeah. everlasting life, yeah. healing, abundant life, yeah. victory. Yeah. Everything that's needed, needful, and necessary, yeah. right. he made the provision for us. Yeah. That's why he is the great provider, yeah. the Lamb of God, the very best that heaven had to offer. Yeah. He provided us eyes to see, Whoa. ears to hear, yeah. legs to walk, yeah. a mouth to talk, yeah. food to eat, yeah. water to drink, yeah. out of breathe. He provided everything yeah. that we would ever need to get through this life. The very best that heaven had to offer. Glory. Let's be no he is the great provider. God bless you.